Okay, one of my sporting history videos. Um, I don't do these as often as I should, but we are looking at the life and career of Jules Rimet, French uh, Frenchman who came up with the idea of the Football World Cup. He was born in 1873 in eastern France, so just after the Franco-Prussian War. Um, France is economically really destitute at the time. So he's not born into wealth wealth, and that affects him as a youth. He, well, as, a, as a teenager, he sets up a team called Red Star, which is based on communist ideals, because he believes that it shouldn't matter if you're upper class, middle class or working class, sport should unite you all. Um, he becomes a lawyer. So he becomes a lawyer and joins FIFA in 1904. Um, at the time, football internationally was only played at the Olympics, at amateur level. There are plans for an international professional tournament or an international tournament between nations, not at the Olympics. They have seen how successful the Olympics have been. The Olympics have been going for a couple of Olympic cycles now, and it's been noticed by FIFA. World War One breaks out in 1914. Those plans for the tournament are put straight away on hold. He serves in the French army. Uh, he wins the coup de guerre, uh, he serves as an officer for the entire duration of the war, and after demobilisation in 1919, because of his time at FIFA, he becomes the president of the French Football Federation. Very important. Because two years later, he's also president of FIFA at the same time, for 33 years until 1954. Um, so, you wouldn't see a, a person be president of FIFA and a president of their current football federation now, that would be a conflict of interest and therefore would be blocked immediately. But back then, it was allowed. There were less nations as members of FIFA as well because of the British Empire, the French Empire, uh, the Portuguese Empire and all that still had colonies abroad. Many independent nations now were colonies back then. So you had less nations as members of FIFA. So that's probably why they allowed him to do it because it was a smaller organisation. Now, during his period as president of FIFA and the French War Federation, the Great Depression happens. But just before the Wall Street crash, there is still an economic downturn. And this is where... Uruguay is really important for the first holders of the World Cup. In 1928, they decided to submit plans for the first World Cup. There's a meeting. They want it to be in Uruguay. There are two reasons for this. With the current economic situation, Uruguay, there were 13 teams going in that World Cup, 12 of them were coming from abroad, and Uruguay agreed to pay the travel costs. Very nice of them. You wouldn't see that today. Uh, also, <laughs> or you wouldn't see that today. Also, the game is professional in some of the countries in South America, like Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. It's professionally played. Uh, it's a big part of the culture. Uh, the sporting clubs in, in Uruguay, Argentina and Brazil are very, very important for communities. Um, because of these two reasons, Uruguay gets the tournament. However, there is some opposition to the tournament. European nations are not happy. The clubs in Europe, most of their players are amateur or semi-professional and have to rely on other income as well. And they will be losing their players for three months. The travel to and from the tournament by sea liner. Not by plane. Planes cannot go the length from Europe to Uruguay. They would have to stop and refuel at least twice. So players would have to go by boat. Again, you wouldn't see that today. Um, and they would lose the clubs would lose their players for up to three months. Um, hence why Uruguay decided to pay the costs. But the European nations, only four European nations go to the tournament. And they drag their feet like Yugoslavia, Belgium, France, and I believe another nation do go. But most European nations are not even members of FIFA, such as the UK. Um, or they refuse to go because of the loss of players from clubs. Big pushback there. You wouldn't see that now. The club country debate goes back pre-World Cup. Oh, yeah. Um, but at the time the tournament's played in 1930, the e well, Wall Street crash has now happened, and there's a massive economic downturn. So the fact that Uruguay would to pay the cost, such a small nation at the time, and Uruguay was not a wealthy nation at the time, it's big economic uh, stress put on the Uruguayan um, Federation and the Uruguayan uh, people to pay for this tournament which you wouldn't see today. You would see the host nation have to pay for the stadiums and all that, but they wouldn't pay the travel costs of the other teams. Their federations now have to pay. So that's something that has changed in world football since 1930. Anyway, the tournament goes off very well. Uruguay win the first ever title. Surprise, surprise. Host nations do do well in their home tournaments. We'll see this a lot. The next tournament is in Italy. Now, Italy is at that time ruled by a fascist government by Benito Mussolini. Much similar to Hitler's Olympics in 36. Uh, he used that as a showpiece event to show that fascism worked for people. Uh, he, uh, Jules Rimet had some criticism about this 34 tournament. He did. He had faced a lot of criticism from uh, the wider public and the wider world saying, you know, you're, you shouldn't really, really do this. You shouldn't really allow a brutal dictatorship to have the tournament. But his argument was this. Sport should be above politics. It should not matter of a man's background or education or class. He should be allowed to play regardless. And that's what he believed before he joined FIFA when he was a teenager.
because he was brought up in the aftermath of a country devastated by war. He served in a brutal war. Um, that was his belief. Anyway, World War Two unfortunately breaks out just after Italy win their second title in 1938. And the next tournament isn't held till 1950 here, when the UK um, nations, so England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, uh, decide to join FIFA and leave the home nations group behind. They decide to join FIFA and join in the World Cup process. That tournament is hosted in Brazil and is won by, you guessed it, Uruguay. Uruguay and Italy are the two dominant powers in world football at this point. Brazil hasn't even won a World Cup yet. Now, he uh, is president until 1954 when Germany win their first tournament. That's West Germany. And then he retires. He retires and he dies two years later in 1956 at the age of 83. Now, the original trophy bore his name, the Jules Rimet trophy. Um, it was stolen in 1966 and was found by a dog called Pickles, famously. Four years later in Mexico in 1970, the, probably the best World Cup the world has ever seen, with some of the, the best team the world has ever seen in Brazil. Brazil win their third title in four World Cups, and they are given the trophy as reward. So in 1974, they make a new one, which is the trophy we have now. But the trophy is now the, in the property of the Brazilian Football Federation and sits pride of place in their offices. But if it wasn't for Jules Rimet, we may not have had the World Cup until much later. We also, world football may be a bit different, and club football would have probably been different as well. Uh, also, the club country debate goes back to 1928, whether you should allow players to play at a tournament or not, due to clubs being concerned that they lose their players for a period of time. And guess what? The length of time now is actually less that you use the players for, but the players get lost in the off-season, when the clubs are not in control of their players because they're on holiday. That's why tournaments take place in summer, so you don't have this clash. That is why tournaments take place in the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere and in the winter winter months in the southern hemisphere at that period of time it is designed so the tournament doesn't clash with club commitments um that may be tested by qatar in four years time because they might have to play that in winter which means all the european leagues will have to shut down for a month and there's concerns about that and we will look at world cups from 1930 till now we will look at that um and look at uh the teams that qualified and the teams that didn't and there's some very interesting nations that have played at the World Cup, including the Dutch East Indies, which is now Indonesia. They played one game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If it wasn't for Jules Rimet and his career and his effect on world football, we may not have had the World Cup as we know it today. And international football may still be only at the Olympics and we wouldn't have friendlies in the Euros. We may not have had that. But because of this guy and his time at FIFA, we have the modern game. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Place your comments below. And if you have any thoughts on the history of the World Cup, Place them below. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.